we go. So Dick Penny has loomed really large in my consciousness ever since I started working at the CRMA, which is in 2015, almost seven years now, which is really wild. Uh, so I am not a Cedar Opidian by birth. And so when I came to the museum, Dick Penny was a new discovery for me. Um, the bigger discovery actually, along with the 113 now pieces of Penny's work that we have in the collection, um, was the reaction of Cedar Opinions to Penny's work. I immediately got phone calls about how we needed to have more Penny on view. We got lots of um, offers of pieces to add to our collection. People were very invested um, in Dick Penny and his artwork, which was really fun for me um, as a curator. because It's always exciting when people are enthusiastic about um, a local artist. And so Penny definitely had a lot of that. So Penny was a real touch point. Um, and let me share my screen and we'll start with my my beautiful dick penny powerpoint this is actually one of the photographs that we have in our collection it's not by dick penny um, but it came to us through him and i just love it because he has such a sense of humor uh, so i've actually had a penny exhibition on my running list of exhibition ideas that i keep for years um, as i mentioned previously at current count we have 113 works by dick in the crma permanent collection um, and these works encompass acrylic painting, watercolor paintings, oil paintings, photography, uh, pencil and ink drawings, ceramic and mixed media pieces, and of course, his famous wood constructions, which I will come back to in a moment. Um, so each of these type of works is represented by at least one work in our current exhibition, Dick Penny, Jack of All Trades. And um, the nice thing about this exhibition, it is in the two middle galleries on the ground floor, um, and it... it just works with our exhibition schedule to be able to have a longer show run in that space. Um, so this exhibition will actually be up nearly through October of 2022. So you have a nice long time to come and see these Dick Penny works that we have. Um, so during this exhibition planning, and certainly for this Art Bites, I was doing some extra extra credit research on Dick Penny. Um, and so I wanted to quote from a 1991 Gazette article that Dion Rex wrote. wrote. That's an interesting pairing of words. And it was about Dick Penny's last exhibition that he had at the CRMA. And this was in 1991. And of course, he passed away in 1996. Um, so Deanne wrote, and I quote, Richard Penny began drawing airplanes in sixth grade. At 65, he's still drawing them. Therein may be the key to his success as an artist. Penny has never outgrown a child's curiosity or love of life. This third generation Cedar Opidian sense of humor is everywhere in abundance. Um, there are some really wonderful photos um, and another quote that I'll get to in a moment, but I just found these two photos of Penny, as I mentioned, the one on the left is one that's in our collection. Um, and that was the first thing that really struck me about Penny's artwork going through it as a curator is just what a sense of humor he had. Um, so many of his artworks are really funny and comical um, and really whimsical. And so that was what first attracted me to his artwork. Um, then museum director Joseph Chestakowski said of Penny's works, quote, they're just pure fantasy. What's really neat about it is that there's this tremendous sense of humor, but at the same time, there's tremendous creative energy. Um, and I feel like Chestakowski's quote is a really neat summation of Penny as an artist. He has this amazing sense of humor and just an enormous amount of creative energy. Um, but clearly, as I listed all of the different media that he worked in, you know, it almost he couldn't limit himself to one form of artistic expression, that he really needed all these different media to get all of his creative energy out. You can tell I love these photos. I come back to them a couple of times. Um, so Penny had no formal artistic training, but he was a sophisticate as well as working in visual arts. He composed music, played the saxophone, um, and very easily quoted Chaucer and Shelley. Um, both proof of his master's degree in English and American literature that he got at Stanford University. This is another common thing throughout his artwork. Um, you can see, as we'll see in these examples, a lot of references to English and American literature, which those are really fun things to pick out. Uh, so here's career included positions such as editor of the Cedar Rapids Tribune, director of public relations and publicity at Coe College, promotion manager of WMT-TV, and president and creative director of Staymates Publications until 1975, and that was when he turned to art full time. In several of the articles that I read about him, Penny cited his charmed childhood in Cedar Rapids as the starting point for his creative career. Uh, he was born on November 1st, 
1924 to Eugene and Alice Taylor Penny, attended Tabor Academy in Marion, Massachusetts, and was Phi Beta Kappa at the University of Iowa, after which he served in Patton's Third Army during World War II. Um, so as well as being an artist, Pinion was a gifted writer and essayist, a publicist, craftsman, and humorist. Um, his 1996 obituary specifically cites the wood sculptures that he created for individuals, not just in the Cedar Rapids community, but throughout the country. Um, and so we have one example of this that is up in the exhibition. Um, I would say this is by far the most common type of penny work that we are offered as an institution because uh, these wood creations that he made for individuals were so beloved in the community. And it's really fascinating to see all of the different ones. Um, so the one that I'm going to share with you today um, was a gift to us from the family of Gary L. Jost. And so I'm going to kind of walk through this one so we can see how Penny creates these wooden portraits of people without actually showing their faces at all. Um, and so I will give credit where credit is due. Sean is responsible for having conversations with the Jost family um, and getting all of the information about this assemblage. So he was able to decode it. And that's what we're going, to, that's what I'm going to share with you today. So I wanted to tip of the hat to Sean because he did all of the legwork on decoding this particular penny piece. Uh, so like nearly all of the wood assemblages that Penny was commissioned to create, he always strove to capture the unique interests of the recipient. So in that way, the work becomes a pictographic and symbolic portrait of the person. Uh, so starting in the upper left corner here, this is the Rockwell International logo. Many moons ago when Collins Aerospace was Rockwell International where Gary Jost worked for 28 years, um, he retired as vice president and general manager of electronics. If you are familiar with Iowa State University's campus, you might recognize this campanile down here and of course the Iowa State mascot. Um, this is where Jost received his degree in industrial engineering. Um, up here, kind of in the middle column, as it were, we have hobbies. Uh, Jost took an annual fishing trip. He was very handy. He built a fireplace for the Jost home. He liked to fix things around the house. So here we see the tools. Uh, the HF radio in our center section. Uh, this was the first division Jost worked in for Rockwell International. He enjoyed playing golf, as we can see. This is a 1948 Jeepster an automobile that Joe's purchased from the Lions Club. Uh, he used the vehicle for their circus, restored it and painted it red and added the white sidewalls. Um, the airplane refers to Joe's international travels, just the same as his passport up here. Uh, Compass is used in measuring, of course, the AIIE is the American Institute of Industrial Engineers logo. <laughs> Pardon me. As I said, the passport refers to is international travel. These are the names of Joe's three children. The skis up here and Winter Park refer to the Joe's annual trip to Winter Park, Colorado and their love of winter sports. Uh, he loved country music, which we can see from the cowboy hat here. Uh, a gambling chip, which I adore. Uh, Joe's enjoyed a bit of gambling, especially on international trips. Um, and in our bottom right corner, the initials LJJ and the figure of Cupid. Uh, so this refers to his marriage to Leah Janice Jost. And, and I can't zoom in here, but there is their wedding date written on Cupid's little heart that he is holding. I blew up a couple of detail images. So you can see this is a really wonderful and interesting and enigmatic way to create a portrait of somebody's life. Um, and these are, as I've said, much beloved. I've seen many, many examples of these since I've come to Cedar Rapids. And so I know they're really treasured family heirlooms. Um, it's so fun to see how, how he worked on each of these and created these symbols for everyone's life. Um, and he does a really beautiful job with wood. You can tell he has a real facility for working with the medium. So in our exhibition that we have on view, I have a couple of my favorite pieces that I wanted to talk through. Um, and one of those is Penny's watercolor landscapes, which I feel are like a bit of a sleeper hit in Penny's oeuvre. Um, so as I said, he worked in acrylic and oil paint and watercolor. Um, and I think actually watercolor is where he is strongest. 
If you've heard me talk about watercolor before, which many of you have, you know, I often call it the really unforgiving medium. Uh, you know, if you make a mistake in oil paint, you can blend, you can take stuff out. In watercolor, that's much, much harder to do. Um, and so what I'm struck by in Penny's watercolor landscapes is how supremely confident he is and how sure of himself as an artist and sure of what he wanted to do in these works uh, to create these landscapes in watercolor. So this is one here. I have, there are my favorite pieces. I have several up in the exhibition. Um, so they're really worth your time to come and look at because it's really astonishing both the effects that he creates and we can see here that he's layered watercolor over pencil drawing. Um, I think some of them use ink over the watercolor so it's fun to see that he does things different ways, but they're just really beautiful fascinating landscapes his use of color I think is fantastic. Um, and I have a couple of other landscapes that I believe are oil up by him at the same time too. Um, so you can see and. I'm certainly open to disagreements on this, but I do think his watercolor landscapes are really where his sense of composition and color and design really come together best. Um, so I find them really fascinating. And as I said, we have several up in the exhibition. I am also a literature nerd, much like Dick Penny is. Um, and if you are an aficionado of the museum, you will recognize this piece because I have used it once or twice before in my six and a half years here almost seven, I suppose. Uh, and so this is Dick Penny's Canterbury Tales. And this is a ceramic and wood piece. It is not light. So every time I have used this in an exhibition, this is a three person carry right here. It is extremely long um, and it's made up of these ceramic panels set into a wood frame uh, around which is written the, <laughs> the prologue to Geoffrey Chaucer's The Canterbury Tales. So if you are unfamiliar, the Canterbury Tales is a collection of 24 stories, uh, runs to about 17,000 lines written in Middle English by Geoffrey Chaucer. Uh, in 1386, Chaucer had become the Comptroller of Customs and Justice of the Peace, and three years later, the Clerk of the King's Work in 1389. Uh, so it was during these years that he began working on the Canterbury Tales, which is his most famous text and one of the hallmarks of English literature. So the tales are presented as part of a storytelling con contest by a group of pilgrims that are traveling together on a journey from London to Canterbury to visit the shrine of St. Thomas Becket at the Canterbury Cathedral. And so the script that we see around Penny's frame is the prologue to the tales. Um, and each little section depicts a different member of this band of pilgrims going from London to Canterbury. So there's, you know, there's the doctor and there is the bishop and there is the wife, uh, the innkeeper. There's all of these different characters, the wife of Bath, very legendarily. Um, and they all have their own conveyances. And you can see this is done in like relatively high relief. So there's wonderful horses and there's lots of texture and fabric details. It's a really fascinating, cool piece. And just as somebody who really loves English literature, I love how much Penny must have loved Chaucer to do this piece. Um, there is a somewhat companion piece to this that I did not put on view. Penny also did um, a relatively small pen and ink drawing of Geoffrey Chaucer, um, as I believe was a gift to a friend. It has a very long uh, kind of memorial written on it, which I also love. Didn't have quite, quite enough room for it in this exhibition. Um, but I always love getting this Canterbury Tales piece out whenever I have the opportunity. And so here are some more close up details. So you can see the care with which he took. Uh, we don't have a ton of clay or ceramic pieces by Penny. I believe this might be our only one. Um, but in this medium with the same enthusiasm and facility that he works in many others, you know, you can really see how excited he is about this you know he's adding lots of texture there's lots of movement to all of these characters and creating a bas relief like this is a really difficult thing to do um so i just i love his enthusiasm i love that he just takes these huge projects on as this would have been and isn't you know wasn't worried about it and saw it as a challenge and i think that really comes through in his art so this is my favorite dick penny piece and I'm sure it won't be the last time I use it while I'm here. So after Penny's exhibition in 1991, he gifted 30 of his artworks to the museum with significantly more to follow. Obviously, as I said, we have around 113. Uh, he also gave archival materials such as his sketchbooks, music compositions, poetry, and newspaper clippings. 
Um, and the bulk of our collection is indeed from the artist himself, which I really love. Um, Penny passed away in 1996 at the age of 71 after a short illness, and his obituary asked for donations to be made to the CRMA in lieu of flowers, which was extremely lovely of him. This is another piece that is also on view in our current exhibition it's in a wall case. Um, and this is his wonderful little dollhouse recreation of Little Bohemia. <coughs> and of course, if you've been down to the Nubo neighborhood, you will recognize uh, this street corner right here as it looks very similar. Um, but he's just done a wonderful job of recreating all of the textures and the feel of that interchange, which I think is wonderful. Um, a couple more pieces here. The work on the left, Musicians, is in the exhibition. The work on the right was one of my last cuts from the exhibition. Um, and that's a linoleum cut. So he also worked in printmaking, although we don't have a ton of examples of that work. He did do it. Um, and again, I think you just see his enthusiasm and his energy and just that creative spirit that really overflowed from him in it. That throw quote also seems really appropriate to him. If a man does not keep pace with his companions, perhaps it is because he hears a different drummer. That seems very appropriate for Dick Penny. Uh, another really good example of his humor here. Uh, I love our little night comic. He had just a really wonderful sense of draftsmanship. He's an excellent painter. Um, as we can see with the work on the right, which is a wonderful landscape painting that, again, I have had on view more than once since coming here, as it is one of my favorites. Um, and as I was saying, he also sent us some more ephemeral materials, such as his sketchbook. So we have some really interesting kind of schematics for works that he was planning, like the work on the right that we're seeing here. Uh, so you can kind of see he's planning out these bigger wooden construction pieces and what he needs and how things are going to go. Uh, we have a number of these, and I think they're really fascinating to see how his mind worked. Um, so to conclude, I will just remind you that the exhibition will be up through October of 2022. Um, and so I encourage everyone to come and spend some time with it because Dick Penny was a fantastic artist, and we are very lucky to have over 100 pieces of his work in our collection that represent such a wide swath of his oeuvre. Um, and I know so many people have penny pieces, and so I am always open to emails showing me photos of the penny pieces people have, because I think they're really fascinating. And because he worked in such a wide array of media, uh, it's always fun to see more things that he has done. Okay, thank you everyone for joining us, um, and I look forward to seeing everyone at Art Bites in 2022. I can't believe this is our last Art Bites of 2021. But thank you all so much, everyone. It's been a wonderful year with you.